stop the FOMO, checking my audio. Before I move any further, can you guys hear me loud and clear? I'm just waiting, bated breath. Yes, yes, green light, does this mean my audio is working today? <laughs> oh, we're gonna have fun today, guys. All right, let me share. All right, everyone. So what we're gonna do today is compare, I know you guys ask this of me so often, internal app versus external app. Is there a difference? Should I get an external streamer alike? Roku stick, Fire Stick, and well, today we're gonna answer that. And it's not, it may not be as clear as you think. Depends on the app, depends on your content. There's Echo. Oh, okay, good, good. So let me take care of that right now. Is there Echo? There's no sound. No sound and there's an echo? What? Okay. Honestly, I wouldn't even know how to fix it because like, wait. All right. I'm going to give it a few seconds. Sounds good? Okay. You guys, troublemakers. All right, let's do this. Okay, so I have this rare opportunity. Two of the same TV, right? We have the Sony A95L left and right. Both have been updated, and yes, once the new TV was updated, very similar. There are very subtle differences, though, so I'll show you that. And so panel lottery still plays a part. It's not drastic, but what we're going to do today is something special. I haven't done this before, so I'll try it today. I'm going to, I have two cameras running. Uh, these are the two cameras I'll be using at the shootout, plus a third one, which is on my face. And what we're going to do is I'll take myself off as we do these comparisons. The TV on top will be exposed as correctly as possible for you to see specular highlights. And then the camera below will be overexposed so that you can see the shadow detail. That way you have both angles. And in some scenes where the shadow detail is really important, I'll swap them so it's larger, right? But this gives you a more complete feel for the various comparisons between the internal app and the external. So we're going to start with this, which is the Chromecast on the left. YouTube TV sports, as you can see, the herd with Callum Cowherd. On the right is internal app and it's an SDR. Actually, you know what? This one, I don't think it's Dolby Vision yet. I think it's still on SDR. So let's, let me double check real quick. I forgot where, where I left it at. So let's see here. It is regular HDR. We will do Dolby Vision and Vivid. So you guys can see the difference. So let's correct that. This is HDR 10. We're going to start with HDR 10. Then we're going to convert it to, we're going to do Dolby Vision. Now, on the right, the internal app, you have no choices. It is SDR. And then you guys can see what's the difference between how the A95L renders SDR, internal app, or how they would render HDR through the external Chromecast. And more importantly, if you have a choice, which one would you choose? And the great thing about having a Sony A95L is it literally it probably has the best upscaling and low bit rate processing of any TV out there right now. Definitely way above average. And so this that gives you an ideal situation, right? YouTube TV running both TVs on two different sources gives me a likelihood that the actual bit rate is low. And I think like I have family who's watching Netflix in, in the other side of the studio. So my bit rate is not going to be perfect. And this is exactly how we want to test this, right? So I'm going to take myself out real quick and I'm going to talk you guys through this and we're going to go through the settings and everything, right? And hopefully, so the bottom one is under is overexposed. The top one's underexposed. But before we jump into it, let's see who is here. So I can say hello to everyone. Thank you for coming by. And once again, I'm having, I'm doing a lot of live streams this week and next week leading up to the TV shootout on September 30th, because I need to test my equipment. Like, I need to just stress test this stuff, right? My batteries, when is it gonna die? How long is it gonna run? All my microphones. So apparently my lav mic is working better now. I'm just using different lav mics because I have to have redundancies, but 
Anyway, that's why we have so many live streams. And it gives me a chance to communicate and engage with you guys. Okay, so, and since I'm going FOMO again, uh, FOMO, I'm going solo, <laughs> I'm going solo again today, um, please excuse me if I miss any of your questions or super chats. I will make an attempt to stop every few minutes. I don't want it to run too long, but I do want to get some of these conclusions out there. Uh, and the Sony A95L is just such a new TV. And I know you guys are very curious. So let's do this real quick. Let me run over the settings so you guys see what we're doing. The TV on the left is the one running Chromecast, right? So I'm going to put it on vivid mode right now because for sports and vivid, the Sony, unlike other TVs, actually still looks pretty natural. So I am fine with vivid mode and it gives me that extra punch of brightness. So because it is HDR, let's start with HDR tone mapping off. We will turn it on at some point so you guys can see the differences, but we'll start with it off and advanced contrast enhancer is on high. If you caught my live stream yesterday, you would see that when watching sports, this makes it easier to read everything, right? Peak luminance is on high. Color, I'm sure live color is on high. And color temperature neutral gives it the most natural color. And let's see here, clarity. Sharpness is 75, this is the default. Round of noise medium, digital noise reduction medium, smooth gradation on low. And on the other side, we have the internal app, picture settings, stop there, there we go. Okay, standard as well, oh, let's take it to vivid. Okay, much better. All right, brightness. Everything is similar except it's SDR. So tone mapping is not accessible. Everything else is on high. Color should be very similar, right? Neutral, live color on high. And clarity, same setting, 75 sharpness, medium digital noise reduction, medium smooth, medium random noise reduction, and smooth gradation is on low. Okay, pause there. It's, I'm going to have to try to coordinate this, right? Oh, come on. Let's see. Let's see it work. There we go. Okay, let's just pause real quick right there so that you guys can see the differences. All right. Now, bottom is overexposed. That's why it looks like that. Now, the top on the right is SDR. On the left is HDR. And the brightness looks actually very similar. And if you look on the bottom screen, right, if I raise the exposure, you see that the black levels are also very similar. And so it appears that SDR doesn't make it better or worse, so to speak, compared to HDR. And I think the big difference will come when I convert it to Dolby Vision via Chromecast. I think that's where you're going to see a lot of the differences. But I'll tell you this, the, there is more detail in the Chromecast. It's really interesting. Contrast, everything, all the settings are the same. It feels like there's more pixels and I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this right now. Let me find it. Here we go. We're talking about Colin's face here. Hope you, hopefully you guys can see this if I can zoom in even further. I'm going to turn the exposure up just a little bit on top. Okay, I think I can see this. Let me look at my YouTube monitor real quick here. Okay, you guys can see the difference, I hope. So there's a harder edged contrast in the SDR version compared to the HDR version. The HDR version has more gradient detail. And this is because there's more information coming through the Chromecast, right? So if this is important to you, that's 
the difference. Now, the question becomes, well, let's, and let me shrink this a bit. Does this affect seeing the football, seeing the jerseys, all that stuff, right? And I think that's definitely for a question. So I'm going to take it out of Zoom so you guys can actually see this a little bit better. So put it back where it was. And you see that there's a bit more shadow detail in the HDR. So now here's something by HDR. The entire scene feels slightly darker. The brightest part of HDR is slightly brighter and the darkest part is slightly darker. That range is the higher dynamic range. On the SDR, the entire image is a little bit brighter overall, but that's perceptually, that's what it feels like because everything is a little bit brighter. The midtones are brighter and there's less, it's more compressed or rather there's less information. So it looks like there are harder edges, right? The contrast feels a bit harsh, harsher. On the HDR side, the Chromecast HDR 10, you're gonna get a lot more shadow detail. And this is in vivid mode, by the way, so it's not like I have one TV on cinema and one on professional or one on cinema, one on standard, right? This is what it looks like in vivid. So let me check and see your question. So clearly there is, it's a lower, it's less information on the SDR side. And it's SDR, that's to be expected, but I didn't expect to see it look like this. It feels like there's more pixels for Sony to play with on the Chromecast HDR10 via the HDMI. So, why does the resolution on this look like not so good, right? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> Let me get this question. And thank you, MR Robot. I wanna make sure I fit your question in. All right, because this is this is YouTube TV, right? Welcome to the world of YouTube TV. This is the resolution you get on YouTube TV. Seven twenty p. That's it. That that's what you're getting on the Chromecast side, and on the internal app SDR side, it is also seven twenty p sixty. I mean, it's auto, but. You know, that's, that's the max you're going to get on either one, right? So sometimes it's a little bit better, but this is streaming sports. OTA could be better, but most people are streaming, watching YouTube TV to get access to NFL, college football. It's a pretty good sports package, and that's why I'm comparing YouTube TV for the sports watcher in vivid mode. We're going to get to Netflix where it's a lot higher resolution and you'll see the difference between Netflix native and Netflix not native, right? With external streamer. But yeah, it's it's crap because YouTube is, is you know, doesn't care. Let's see what other questions you guys got here before we get to Adobe Vision and vivid and then you'll see an, an even bigger difference. And James has the S Oh, here we go. I'll give it up here. Perfect. Has the A95L on order. It's a good TV. I have no complaints. If, if, if it fits your expectations, it is doing what the A95K, but a little bit better. And Classy wants to share that he likes Sony for low bitrate better, which is what you guys are seeing here, and LG for upscaling better. Two different subjective things, which means that there is no wrong answer, right? Both are expensive and well-made TVs. Does it fit you or not? So let me push play. So see, watch a little bit more of this. There we go. Oh, wait. Gonna make sure. I forgot it's an NFL scene. I don't want to get hit. Okay, so this is in HDR10. What happens if I convert this to Dolby Vision Vivid in this scene, right? So let's do that right now. And yes, they're all on the same firmware. So there should be very minimal panel variance differences. Oops, sorry. There we go. Okay, let's get to Dolby Vision.
All right, let's change it to Dolby Vision Vivid. That's why it's dark, it's in Dolby Vision Dark. And picture settings. Brightness preferred. I am going to take it off and then we'll turn it back on. Tone mapping on to gradation and brightness so you guys can see the differences if there are any. Everything else is the same. Live color high, neutral there. Clarity should be the same. Yep, okay. And now I have to resync <laughs> YouTube TV. Where is he here? Uh, 47 minute, 33 seconds. There we go. It'll be close. Close enough. Okay. Let me adjust, adjust exposure for you guys. Touch. Okay. At the bottom, right here. This is actually brighter than SDR. So it doesn't look like it's brighter, but there's actually, there's at least probably 50 nits more bright there. And let me take this one off so you guys can see that better. Okay, so you see the difference. SDR, it looks, well, <laughs> there's less detail. <laughs> it's kinda, it doesn't look as good, right? But what's interesting is in vivid mode, on, oh wait, you know what? Let me change this. So, Dolby Vision. There we go. And let me add this. Okay. So. Both TVs are in vivid mode. The one on the left is Adobe Vision Vivid. The one on the right is the internal app. It's an SDR, but also vivid mode. Everything else, all settings are the same. So on the, and the colors are, are very much a little bit different as well. In SDR, the green is a bit more fluorescent in vivid mode, but in Dolby Vision, I guess being Dolby Vision, it's a bit more natural, it actually looks more like green grass with more shadow detail. And the brightest part of the scene is brighter than on the internal app. So the yellow is a brighter yellow. It's the same saturation, except it's just brighter. The helmet on Tua, on the bottom there, it's brighter. The helmet, I mean, everything that's a highlight is brighter on the Dolby Vision side. But on the SDR side, it's not subtle. It's just the whole thing kind of is bright. So it feels like the scene is overall brighter. And that's something you guys have to think about. If you need the TV to be just bright altogether, right? You don't care about the details, then SDR would be for you. You would watch the internal app YouTube TV because it feels perceptually that the TV on the right, SDR is brighter. The reality is the one on the left, the specular highlights are brighter. And let me add the dark areas to see if the black level actually is any different. And the black levels look very s similar, actually. Let me compare. The, the words on the left where it says Tua on people, that black level is blacker than the one on the right. So it's easier to read, right? So where it's, you know, where it's important, so I'll point it out for you guys. Right here, the black background and the blue background is darker than over here. It's hard for me to capture it on YouTube, but it's dark enough that the words pop out. So from across the room, it would definitely be easier to read text. And 
let me see, like on top here, let's zoom in on that number three. I think that, that actually is pretty good as well. Let me change it to, is it this one? There we go. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's do the other one. This one, I'll zoom as you guys look at the letters, the differences in the black levels. And then on, here we go. Okay, let me match the scenes. So we can compare oranges to oranges, right? All right, let's do this again. Let's see if my timing is any good. Ah, oh, I think I did it. All right, 58. Oh no, I think this one is just off slightly. Man, it's killing me right here. Okay. <laughs> Just missed it. Bear with me. This is important to me. All right, here we go. You know what? Actually, that's better. The number 58. Oh, I think I got it. There we go. Okay. So, look how much darker, oh wait, 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 there we go, better, okay. So, the field in Dolby Vision, there is gradients, subtleties, right, all that stuff. But the question is, that number 58 tackle or guard, can you see it better on Dolby Vision? And it looks like it actually might be easier to see, in this case, in the SDR, for whatever reason, right? I mean, this is what it is. So you have to decide, should you watch sports in Dolby Vision or not? Now, again, the brightest part of the scene, it's brighter in Dolby Vision, but because there's so much gradient, it feels like the SDR is brighter because everything is like over brightened. But the specular highlights in Dolby Vision is actually brighter, specifically this part right here. Oh, let me take out this real quick. Okay. See, they choose which specular highlights to make bright, but then look at Colin's face. It's more natural in Dolby Vision. It's a bit harsher in SDR, but what's important is the field which field do you prefer? And this is subjective, right? It's no big deal, but it's giving you those differences. So let's check out what questions you guys got. Hopefully that kind of helps you guys decide, maybe. Now, this is not the same for all TVs. <laughs> this is specifically Sony's. I suspect this is how Sony does it on their TVs. Probably the A80L is probably similar. All the Sony's have this look and feel with, with their vivid mode being actually kind of accurate, but this is Dolby Vision, so you get the best of all worlds. It's Dolby Vision in vivid mode, whereas the SDR side, eh, there's only so much you can do, right? But I think you can see that the letters on in Dolby Vision on the bottom, it's easier to read the text because again, it's slightly darker. So, you know, it's, it's, there's, it's a mixed bag, I guess, is the best way. All right. Yeah, 
Thanks for reminding me. Sometimes I forget to remove the lower screens, but it's gone. So the S star looks brighter, and I think that's because it's the illusion. Larger windows are brighter, whereas the Dolby Vision on the left, the specular highlights, the tiny little stuff is brighter. But overall, the APL may actually not be brighter. So, so crypto colorites, I agree with you. If it wasn't for my exposure meter, I would have thought SJR is brighter. The reality is actually Adobe Vision Vivid is a little bit brighter. Like the, the words, right, and, and the black, those letters, those words are actually a little bit brighter on the Adobe Vision side, but on the right, almost everything is, is bright. So it feels like the scene is brighter. But again, preference, what do you guys prefer? Oops, wrong one. Let's put it back in here. There we go. That's it. There we go. Okay, let's see what questions you got. So this is a force, Dolby Vision. This is Chromecast, and I guess the answer is yes, right? This is Chromecast converting everything to Dolby Vision. And compared to, well, and on the other side, it's forced SDR. I mean, what is the actual content, the native content? I have no idea. I just know that with Chromecast via HDMI, you have two choices. You go HDR or Dolby Vision. And with the Sony internal app, YouTube TV, it is what it is. It is, in this case, SDR. Now, whether other content on YouTube TV would be in Dolby Vision or HDR is a whole other matter. But since this is on the more popular sports channels, right, you're kind of seeing what a lot of people get YouTube TV for. And Don says, Sony internal app just shows the native format. So if the native format's SDR, that's what it is on the Sony. But speaking of that, let's move on to Netflix next. I know you guys were excited to see that. So since we're in Dolby Vision, we'll just go to Netflix right now. So on the left, you see it's Dolby Vision. And on the right, it says Dolby Vision as well. The question is, because it's native, right? So on the Sony, you get Netflix native in Dolby Vision. And, and we, what we'll do is, since it's already in Dolby Vision, we'll watch and see if there's any differences in Dolby Vision. And I will change the setting to something else, not vivid. We'll, we'll, we'll watch it in professional mode. But then after you see the comparison in Dolby Vision Netflix, I will then swap over to regular HDR on the Chromecast so you guys can see if there's if it's worth watching Adobe Vision because in Netflix you will be forced by the internal app to watch it in Adobe Vision if that makes a difference to you. So let's start by changing my labels right now. So this is Netflix and we'll watch it in well since it's Adobe Vision this will be DV Dark. It's most accurate mode. There we go. Okay. So, and let's change this. Chromecast, internal app, also Dolby Vision. Okay. Let's see if we can get something done here. Oh, I have to put it in professional mode. That's why it looks different. So let's do that right now. Oh, Dolby Vision Dark, I mean. I keep forgetting. There we go. So that's Dolby Vision Dark. Right here. It's already in Dolby Vision Dark. And all the other settings are the same. And let me lower the exposure. Let's see, I'll lower it a bit more. Oh, 
Okay, so looks identical to me. <laughs> and let me add in the high exposure scene as well so you guys can see what it looks like. And the dark areas, oh, let me, ah, it's too zoomed in. Give me a second, please. Here we go. Huh. Okay. Boom. I think that gets you to the most important parts of the scene. Let me shrink this a bit more because I know a lot of you want to see the whole thing, but the bottom's so dark anyway, you need this to see if, you know, with the dark details. So now you have both black levels on the bottom and then you have the tone mapping on top and it looks identical to me in terms of what Dolby Vision does. Slight color differences, panel variance being what it is. All right, I think I saw a super chat. So let me jump in there and hit that. Thank you, Jody's Corner. Looks like the S95C, S90C is the best bet right now when it comes to total package. Visuals, gaming, what do you think so far? Jody, the S90C 77 inch is my editor's choice for everyone, most people, 99.9% .9 of the time. The Sony A95L 77 inch, it's QD OLED, but if, you come from, if you're coming from a Sony, you're gonna continue getting Sony and it, it does everything Sony does well and that's consistent. But if you're coming from some other TV brand that's much cheaper, either another Samsung, TCL, Hisense, whatever, I see get the S90C, call it a day, you'll be happy because I really like the 77 inch S90C as well as the S95C, right? Biggest difference being that one connect box, but it's not worth it to me. I think the image quality in the 77 inch looks amazing. And as far as just brightness and all that, at this point, I know Sony said they're a lot brighter this year, but I cannot say it's brighter than the G3 or the Samsung because the content you guys are watching is not gonna push any of these TVs to their limits, right? So that's what I think so far. Thank you for that super chat. Let me see if you guys have any questions about this. Oh, okay, here we go. Iceman and Bob says, the sun on the left Chromecast version looks brighter through the camera. And it's possible. I mean, it, it's, it could be a panel variance. All my settings are identical on both sides. So that's something that, that and I have to say, we're going to run through YouTube, just regular YouTube. I noticed that the TV on the left also has slightly raised blacks when it's the same scene, very slightly. So that could probably be addressed with calibration as well. So the TVs are very close, but not identical, right? Like no two TVs are identical out of the box, but they can get pretty close. All right, Reddick asks, what if you were locked to 55 inches? Which one would you choose? Mainly watching Netflix, Crunchyroll, sports, and 30% gaming. Mm. Netflix, Crunchyroll, sports. If, I mean, I like the A95K, but 30% gaming, then the G3, you know it's going to work. You know it's going to work with any gaming platform. Yes, you have some workarounds. You need to get it brighter. The S90C is definitely right there, except... If Dolby Vision is important to you, SNIC doesn't show Netflix native, natively in Dolby Vision or any, <laughs> any Dolby Vision, whereas the G3 has very bright Dolby Vision, actually brighter than the Sony, in my opinion. So if Dolby Vision is important to you, the G3 is great because it has gaming and Dolby Vision brightness. Otherwise, if you don't care about Dolby Vision, I think the S90C also fits you as well. And, and also, if you're watching this stuff natively, or not natively, right? The Sony has Crunchyroll on this remote. I mean, that, that could be a sale right there, right? The Crunchyroll on the remote. So let me know what you end up choosing, my friend. Dolby Vision Bright actually takes advantage of the new panel capabilities without totally compromising the image. All right, let's, let's do that. You know, I have them here. So let's go to Dolby Vision Bright and see what happens. And, OK, 
Okay, that one's Dolby Vision Bright. I am locked in Dolby Vision Dark. What? Okay, let's try this again. There we go, Dolby Vision Bright. I guess the internal app's a little bit different. Interesting. The Dolby Vision Bright on the Chromecast is a little bit brighter. Let's make sure all the other settings are the same. So that's that's a good call. There you go, Division Bright. Okay. Netflix calibrated mode is off. I do not like Netflix calibrated mode. Okay. Max 90 HR tool mapping. You go in Dolby Vision, so everything else. Color, right. Okay, everything looks the same. All right, let me lower the exposure a touch. Okay. Mm. It looks like, yeah, it does look like Chromecast Dolby Vision slightly brighter, doesn't it? Let me check my exposure meter. Yes, Chromecast is a touch brighter. Just a touch, but it's there. My exposure notices it for sure. That's very interesting. So, if you want brighter Dolby Vision by a touch, and, and to be fair, it's not that yeah. noticeable, right? So, uh, or maybe calibration would fix it. I mean, it could be a panel variance, because if you notice on the bottom screen, the right hand side, the blacks are a little bit deeper. So maybe the entire image is shifted slightly dark. So, but most of you will buy this TV without calibrating or anything, right? You just buy it. This is why you pay the premium. And it could be panel variance. I mean, it's close enough that it's panel variance. So I'm not going to have, I'm not going to say anything conclusive. It, it doesn't pop out at me. But yeah, it's definitely slightly, ever so slightly brighter on the Chromecast Dolby Vision. But could be panel variance. There's enough variance between panels that that is easily explained away as well. Okay, so what you guys got here. But it is now, oh, wait, let me change this. This is Dolby Vision. <laughs> See, I can't remember to change my label. So is Dolby Vision bright now? hoo -ah. Okay, there we are. Yes, both the same settings. They're both on Dolby Vision Bright. The only difference is one is an internal app and the internal app is not using Netflix calibrated mode. But I'm sure you're curious, what does Netflix calibrated mode do? Like, does it get even brighter? So let's find out together. All right, uh, Netflix calibrated mode is on now. Huh. Did it get brighter? Like, did something change? Let's try to see. Okay, let's, let's, let's toggle it one more time. I, I saw something shift, but it was too fast. Okay. Oh. Took too long. There we go. Okay. Yeah, off, it's slightly brighter, on, slightly darker. I mean, that's about it. So I, I wouldn't keep it on. It's, it's just so slight. It, it, it doesn't do anything. It, it doesn't change anything at all, really. Okay, so we got here. And I also like Dolby Vision Bright. Most room conditions, bright. It's easier to see, right? Shadow detail and all of that. But yeah, 
it feels like, you know, let me go to the next scene because there's this differences in the scenes or let's go to this one. Oh, actually, no. Let's see some reds, right? Okay, let me just... my exposure up okay what do we got here hmm a little exposure a bit This is in Dolby Vision Bright still. So let's put it back to the accurate Dolby Vision Dark. Oh, calibrated mode. Oops, vivid. Okay, so that's dark. Correct. Let's turn it off calibrated mode. Go back to dark. dark. And look pretty much the same. So for the most part, Netflix, it, I wouldn't decide between internal app or not, just based on Netflix. Now, let's say this same scene without Dolby Vision. I think that's what you guys want, right? So we're gonna do HDR Netflix next. But let me see if you have any questions before I do that. Okay, let's do it. HDR, get back in there. Okay, we are now in HDR. HDR is brighter, as you guys can see. And this is why I kind of like HDR, Dolby Vision aggressively. So you get detail and stuff, but, and we're gonna double check the settings so you guys can see what I'm talking about as well. All right, all right. And yeah, it's possible that it's dimming on the right. So let's reset it. There we go. Okay, so quick settings check. Make sure it's not in vivid mode. Of course it's in vivid mode, right? All right. Now, maybe, so let me check my exposure meter and see. Specular highlight is just a little bit brighter, but again, it's so subtle. I, I would make the decision just based on this. It could be panel variance as well. So as you guys can see, the, it seems very similar, whether it's HDR or Dolby Vision. So this is HD, and this is why a lot of people are like, oh, I need to have Dolby Vision. As you can see, it's HDR 10. That's what the Sony sees as well. I'm like, why? Like, why do you need? But this seems easy though. Let's go to the hard one, the one that Classy and I like to talk about in this, in this episode. I 
Ah, is this the one? Oh. What? Maybe this would be good. 2440. So this is the strength of Dolby Vision, right? Tone mapping these bright scenes on a Netflix stream. And I'm looking at the brightness. Definitely, brightness is very similar. So it doesn't feel like one is really brighter than the other. And well, I think Dolby Vision looks great, but so does HDR. And as you see the shadow detail in the, you know, if I overexpose the same scene, the shadow detail is very similar. Now, arguably Dolby Vision might have, I mean, it's, it's so subtle. And I had to overexpose. I, I can't really say that there's more shadow detail in the Dolby Vision. It's very close. So, oh, of course. Yeah, thank you. Got to change the label. This is HDR now. Okay, everyone, we're still on HDR 10. Okay, <laughs> this is not helpful, right? Okay, now, this is why, like, what does it matter if you're on Dolby Vision or not, right? So the Sony sees Dolby Vision HDR 10, it's all the same. So if you get a Sony TV and you're plugging in a scene and it's not in Dolby Vision and you're like, oh no, it's not in Dolby Vision, does it really matter? I mean, does this kind of settle for those of you who are streaming? Non-streaming content, maybe a different thing. So let's let's just take that out. Kass and I talk about this all the time. Streaming content, you have no idea if they're really grading Adobe Vision or are they just putting it into a Adobe Vision container? We have no idea. But just because it says Adobe Vision might mean nothing. And in this scene, it doesn't look like it means anything. So just keep that in mind, guys. Like those of you who are hesitant to get a Samsung because you need that Adobe Vision label, it doesn't always look the same or I mean, it doesn't always look different. And if it does, it doesn't mean it's better. It may be just that it's different. So let me find another scene. Oh, this is a good one. Oops. There we go. So this should be good, right? Actually, let me just find some. There we go. Okay. Okay. Here's a scene that Dolby Vision should make a difference. And if you look at the shadow detail on the bottom, the highlights on the top, I'm going to lower the exposure a bit more. It's identical, right? HDR 10, Dolby Vision on the right, internal app, streaming HDR. It feels like Netflix didn't pack it. I mean, they just packaged an Adobe Vision container. But look at the shadow detail on the bottom camera and the highlights on the top. I mean, if you see any differences, it's really hard to, to say. If anything, might be slight brightness differences, like the top of her head. There's a bit more. Actually, you know what? There is a slight difference right here. But it could be that my scene is off right here. There's more detail over here on the, ironically, on the HDR10 version, right? But, you know, you could argue, oh, you know, FOMO's one, I'm arguably one scene off. So it could be that it's not exactly the match scene. So that's something else to keep in mind. 
let me see. Those sparks really help me match it and the sparks are totally off. See, I, I can't match it. Oh well, I'm sorry guys. It's not an exact scene match, but it's close enough that you guys should not be buying a TV based on one being Dolby Vision and one being not being. And this is if you're watching Netflix, The Witcher, because you know, every content's different now. Let's try a different movie or a different show. I think Sweet Tooth might have some scenes, but if you're already convinced, I'm not gonna waste your time. But <laughs> yeah, I'm off by one frame, like, oh, one frame, ah! That's like a millisecond, right? Okay. Dolby Vision looks sharper to me. Ah, I don't know. It, it's, it's just, it's, it's, and it could be because internal app, but it really is, the, the resolution is the same to me. The problem is, and this is the tricky thing, Sony doesn't allow me to check the signal information if it's in native app, whereas if it's external, I get all the signal information I need. So I know for sure this is 4K, right? But it does look like they're all in 4K. But just, I'm eyeballing it. it Adobe Vision is not higher resolution or sharper. It, it, and, and the scene's off. That's another thing. <laughs> maybe, maybe in that other scene. There you go. See? It's like, oh. Yeah, it's very close, guys. Very close. Close enough that it should not determine your choice. How's that? If you have to squint and go frame by frame, it's not obvious. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. I'm eyeballing it. Looks the same to me, too. But again, if the TV that's cheaper ends up being Dolby Vision, get it. It's a cheaper TV. That's expensive. Or it ends up being a Samsung, like the S90C or the S95C. But the S90C, amazing promotions. And if it's holding you back because it doesn't have Dolby Vision and you're a Netflix watcher, but let's go to YouTube, just regular YouTube. Does that make a difference? And, and we'll see. We're going to do some of the demo stuff on YouTube. Where's my YouTube button? Here we go. So on the right will be the internal app and on the left will be whatever. Let me change my labels real quick. My Chromecast is lagged, <laughs> clearly. And a lot of people watch YouTube in standard mode, right? So let's do standard mode. I don't think people really care, but I'm gonna do standard mode just to try a different mode. And there we go. Let's try this again. Okay. Wrong video. Actually, you know, let's, let's do a different demo. This is a good one. And let's put it on standard mode. Okay, better. I think I got it timed. 
Hey, congratulations, A95L in the UAE. I'll take this one off. Let me turn up the exposure on the main. Okay. So on the left, HDR, external app, Chromecast. On the right, we have, well, I can't check what's what, but I know it's HDR and it's the internal app, YouTube TV. This is the LG demo and we are in standard mode. And they look the same, they look great. So when you're watching YouTube TV, if it's high quality content, it doesn't look like it really makes a difference. I mean, they look very similar to me. Why, thank you, John. FOMO, you're the best. Wait, 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 wait. I, I gotta address this, come on. Movies anywhere would have been a better source. We're talking about streaming internal app. I don't have, I don't think Sony has a movies anywhere internal app. Do they? Now, if you want high quality, right? Most people, because I'm trying to address most people, most people are watching Netflix, YouTube, YouTube TV. I think that covers three of the most common use cases. If you are talking about the highest quality content, well, you have Bravia Core, you have Kaleidoscape, right? And Movies Anywhere is great, but the reality is, what's your option? Movies Anywhere on the TV, direct streaming or not? You're not really making that decision. The question is whether you're getting a Roku stick or a Fire Stick or a Chromecast. And this is very specific to Chromecast too, right? Uh, I don't expect Roku or Fire to be that much different. It just feels like, I think the biggest difference is when it's a native app, if it's SDR, that's the difference. But if it's real content, it doesn't look like it makes a really big difference at all. It's not visibly, visually noticeable, right? But if it's sports watching and one is SDR and the other is HDR, now you might have to decide. And that was what we talked about earlier. Bravia Core is amazing. Yeah. Hey, they have a high bitrate content, right? You're streaming a higher... It could be a high bitrate container, <laughs> so I don't want to oversell it. But yeah, Sony really does try to give the highest quality streaming content on Bravia Core that no one else is matching right now. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Here's the best one. Some users in the AVS forum make fun of FOMO for occasionally making mistakes. Occasionally, right? I make mistakes all the time. The thing is, I'm here to learn with you guys, right? And, you know, people are free to come on and be perfect. I, what can I say? The goal is to test the TVs as they are. And if people are looking for perfection, you know, it's, you know I can get it here. But what you will get is engagement and my, my honest opinion. Because at the end of the day, whatever TV you get, if you're paying more than two grand, it's probably gonna be a good TV and you'll probably be happy. But you have very specific use cases and well, that's what we address, right? That very specific use case. And even then, if the firmware update changes that use case, well, well what are you going to do? <sighs> Stop the FOMO. I like the AC off and my wife likes it on. <laughs> what do I do? You know, it's like my family. My, so what I do is I have the AC on and then I wear like a sweater right? Or it's the other way around where it's super hot and the AC is broken. Well, then I just walk around with my shirt off or something like that, right? So, something that guys like to do. So I normally defer to my wife, whatever she wants. It just makes it easier. And then the kids are normally like, dad, blah, 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 go talk to mom. And then she has to deal with it, right? All right. Okay. So I think we have kind of a, a conclusion. So here's my conclusion about internal or external apps. Use the external app if you want to ensure that your content will can be 
HDR, if it's meant to be HDR for sure, or you prefer to convert everything to HDR and let Sony's processor make it look better than Chromecast, Roku, all the various external streamers, you have the ability to convert everything to SDR, HDR, sometimes Dolby Vision. That gives you a shot at having your TV, whether it's a G3, C3, A95L, or A80L, do the conversion and you have options, right? On the other hand, if it's an internal app, you are fixed with whatever that is, whether it's Netflix or whether it's the YouTube TV. If it's SDR, that's it. There is no changing that setting. And sometimes you want those options. So, but then convenience, <laughs> if convenience is important, was the difference enough to make it inconvenient to get another device? Let me know. So let me look at your questions real quick and you know, we'll be done. BR, BRNZ asks, hey FOMO, 77 inch S95C or 85 inch X95L at 14 feet. Coming from a Samsung, never had a Sony TV. You know what? Here's your chance to get a Sony TV. I think if you're coming from a Samsung, the X95L for two reasons. One, it's slightly bigger. So I think that's important for 14 feet away. And equally important, if you're in a bright room, both the X95L and the S95C as far as brightness, very similar because you're going to max out the brightness settings, whether it's going to be standard mode or vivid mode. But if you're watching sports, the extra size on the 85 inch and well, so I like Sony's upscaling as well as its motion processing. I really like its motion processing. So the 85 inch for me nails it. The brightness in a mixed use, brightly lit room. Also the X95L, you don't have to worry about dimming in any sports, right? Um, yeah. I, I choose the 85 inch X95L for myself personally, because that extra eight inches or so, uh, or 12 inch, 77 inch. Yeah. Eight inches. I think it makes a difference because the image quality difference isn't enough to the size I think is unless you're a gamer, the S95C will have more or easier gaming features and the game bar and all of that. But you know, if you're a console gamer, x 95 l is also fine. Okay. Non-serious console gamer, like PS5, just plug in the X95L and enjoy yourself. The enthusiast will buy the A95L. Uh, it depends on the enthusiast, but yeah, many will, no doubt. <laughs> I'm going to ask my dentist what kind of TV he has. Hey, let me know if it's a Vizio. You'll be surprised. All right. Okay. I think we're done here. So just a reminder, guys, the live stream of the broadcast for the shootout is in two weeks. So September 30th is the actual shootout, but we're going to have fun streaming on the 27th, 28th, 29th. Leading up to the shootout, we'll talk to calibrators, getting the TV set up, our impressions. Personally, this will not affect the judges because they will not see what we're seeing. They're going to judge coming in fresh, looking at all the scenes. We're just talking about what we feel the TVs are on the outside because our preferences, you might want to be, you might want to know what we kind of like and what we see when the TVs are all there, right? So that'll be fun. And then on the 1st, October 1st, we are going to have the 8K, 85 inch shootout, sound bar comparisons. We're gonna have a few 100 inch or 98 inch TVs there to compare. So it'll be two days of the shootout itself and then a few days of just leading up to it, behind the scenes, Q and A. So we're gonna have fun. Anyway, oh, <laughs> gaming stream. Uh, I think as hard as this is, right? I think a gaming stream will be even harder because splitting it between two different, if it's the same TV, obviously easy, but two different TVs, then you have to have the whole HDR click, click, click. So I have to literally have two different, two of the same gaming systems, you know, two PS5s, two Xbox Series X, and then have two people actually go through it. It'll be impossible. It'll take forever for me to go through it. So at some point, I'm sure someone's going to do a dual TV gaming stream, but it's, man, it's just so complicated. All right. Let's see. Hey, thank you for showing up on this quickie live stream. I'm going to put out a, you know, 2023 OLED TV roundup 
give you my impressions of all the OLED TVs. If you're still on the fence, deciding which TV is what. And now that the A95L is here, that will be a complete video in a sense that we've had a chance to see all the top all the TVs of 2023 and you know we'll talk about it so until next time stop the FOMO